Code expliancy is high. Today we're going to talk about another array method, a must know array method, which is the reduce method. First, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Well, let's go and see an example where we need to use the reduce method. But first, I'm going to use a full loop to see exactly what's going on in the background before going and talk about the reduce method. So I have here an array called cart and then we have here some items. So this is a user entering our online store and has uh, added three items to the cart. And of course we need to show to the user the total price of all these items that are in its cart. So what we need to do is we need to go and initialize a variable called total with zeros. So this is where we need to store the total price of the items. So then I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to use here a simple for loop. I'm going to start from the first element with index zero and I want to stop at the last one here. Then I want to increment i by one each time to go from an element to another element. Now I'm going to create a cost called item equals to cart with index i just to make my code more readable and then all I need to do is add the total here plus the item dot price and then set whatever this returns to total to accumulate the price of the uh, items. Now what's going to happen in the background so I'm going to keep track here of i and the total variable the item dot price and the total plus item dot price here. So on the first iteration, the i will be equal to zero. The total will also be equal to zero. The item dot price will be 1000 because this is the first element in our array. And then this one here plus this uh, item price will be equal to 1000. Now uh, we will assign this to total so total will be now equals to 1000 and the second iteration then the item dot price will be 500 that's the second element and then the addition of these two prices will be now 1500 now on the third iteration the total will be receiving this uh, amount here which is 1500 and the item dot price will be 800 that's the last element so i will get 2300 as the total price for the items in my cart. This means that if I run this code here and then console log total, it's going to be equal to 2300. Now what you've seen here is exactly the same thing is going to happen with the reduce method. Except the total here is going to be called an accumulator. So this is where we accumulate the prices of these items here. Now you can see that at the end we get a value. So we started from an array and then at the end we end up with a single value. This means that you want to use reduce when you want to reduce an array to a single value. Of course that value can be a number, a string, a boolean, an array, an object, etc. Well, let's go and talk about reduce now. So you want to call reduce in your array and then you want to pass in a callback function. So this is a function you want to create and then pass it to reduce. And based on that function, reduce will reduce your array to a single value. Now you can also pass in along with the callback function an initial value. So you can either pass in a callback function or a callback function with an initial value. That's all. Well, you can also pass in an inline function as a callback function. You can pass in an arrow function also as an inline function. And now let's go and see some examples. So I have here an array called numbers and now I can either call reduce with just the callback function or I can call reduce with the callback function and also an initial value. So you can either call it with a function without the initial value or with the initial value. So those are the only options we have with the reduce method. And now let's talk about our callback function. So I'm going to create my callback function with the function keyword. And now what is important here is the parameters that are going to be passed to my function by the reduce method. 
So my reduce method here will go and call my callback function on each of these elements one by one. And now the first parameter will be the accumulator. And simply here, the accumulator here only represents the total variable from the for loop here, the example we've seen before. We can also call this the previous value. So this is where we accumulate all the previous values. Now the second parameter is going to be the current element, the element itself. So and the first iteration is going to be 3, then 5, then 4, then 2. So because these are numbers, you can call this current number. You can call it whatever you want. You can also call the accumulator anything you want. You can call it previous value, you can call it total, etc. Now the third parameter is the index and the fourth is the array. The index is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3 and the array is going to be this whole array here. So instead of using numbers, you can use the fourth parameter here, array. And now your callback function must return a value at the end. If you don't return a value, undefined will be returned. So you must return a value from your callback function because remember you are using the reduce method to reduce numbers array or your array to a single value at the end. So you must return a value each time your function is called by reduce. So here what I'm doing is returning the accumulator plus the current element or the current number. So basically I'm summing the numbers. So I'm doing the sum of the numbers in the array. So I'm just going to call my callback function from before sum. Now I'm going to pass in an initial value and it's going to be here zero. So I'm just going to choose zero. You can choose anything you want. So zero here or the initial value can be an object, can be an array, can be a string, anything you want to start with. So here I'm going to keep track of the numbers of iteration and also the accumulator here, the current element and also the return value from my function. I just used here ACC because I don't have enough space here. Well, on the first iteration, what's going to happen here is that the initial value here you passed will be assigned to the accumulator. So the accumulator here will be equal to zero on the first iteration. And then for the current element, it's going to be the first element in your array. That's for the first iteration. Now for the second iteration, it's going to be five. So the second element. For the third iteration, it's going to be four. And for the last iteration of 4, it's going to be 2. Now the accumulator is going to be the one that is changing when calling reduce on the elements in your array. So on the first iteration here, accumulator plus current element is going to be 0 plus 3, which is going to be 3. Now accumulator's uh, value will be changed by reduce. So it's not going to be 0 anymore but it's going to be the return value from the sum method or the sum function on the first iteration here. So it's going to be three. Again, reduce will call this function on this element here. So it's going to be five plus the accumulator, which is three now, and it's going to be eight. Now sum is returning eight and then the accumulator value or new value is going to be eight. Then 8 plus 4 is going to be 12. Again, the accumulator's value will be changed to 12. Then 12 plus 2 is going to be 14. So when you call numbers that are reduced with sum and the initial value is set to 0, you're going to get a single value 14. Now let's go and see what's going to happen if I use just the sum a function without the initial value. So I'm going to keep track again of these variables here. Now on the first iteration, the accumulator will not be set to the initial value. So it's going to be set to the first element in my array. So it's going to be equal to three here. Then the current element is not going to be anymore three like here. It's going to be now five, the second element. So when you don't pass in an initial value, the accumulator will be assigned the first uh, element in your array and the current element will be assigned the second element in your array. So it's going to be five. Now on the second iteration, it's going to be four. 
the third element and on the third iteration is going to be two and now you can see that there is no more a fourth iteration so when you use uh, the initial value or when you pass the initial value to reduce you will be always ahead with one iteration than if you didn't use the initial value now what's going to happen here again accumulator plus current element is going to be 8 now the accumulator's value or new value is going to be 8 8 plus 4 is 12 now the new value is going to be 12 for the accumulator 12 plus 2 is going to be 14 and you can see how we got the same result but that's not the case uh, all the time now let's go back to our example from before so where we wanted to calculate the price of the items in my cart so i'm going to do this example with the reduce method so i'm going to keep my array here and then i want to create my callback function by the way this callback function that we pass to reduce we often call it a reducer now uh, you remember that the callback function takes in as parameters the accumulator and also the current element. Now, I don't like this name here. I'm just going to change it to item because these are items. Now, what I want to do is I'm just going to go and return, just like we did with the full loop, the accumulator or uh, we used total. Uh, we will return the accumulator plus the item dot price and now let's go and call reduce on my card array with the total price without the initial value i'm going to assign this to total because i'm expecting the total price of these items now i'm going to keep track again of the iteration the accumulator the item we pass to the total price and then the returned value from my function here the accumulator plus the item price now on the first iteration here and if you remember because we didn't pass an initial value here the accumulator will be the first element here this object so the accumulator now is an object now the item will be the second one in my array and on the second iteration it's going to be the third one the last one there is no third iteration here now when the function runs for the first time you can see here that we have accumulator plus item dot price item dot price is a number and accumulator here is a an object now let's go and talk about the return value uh, from my uh, total price my callback function so now you can see that the accumulator here is a an object but the item that price is a number now when javascript is trying to add an object with a number it's gonna go and convert this to a string so when converting an object to a string you will get this square brackets the inside object object you can try that you can try calling uh the two string method on an object this is what you're gonna get now because this is now a string this is not an object this is a string javascript when adding strings with numbers it will see this number as a string so it's just gonna go and concatenate this string with this number here so this is what we get object object then 500 so on the second iteration the accumulator value is this returned value here again because this is a string and now the item dot price is 800 a number again javascript will just concatenate this string with this number here so this is the value that we'll get on the second iteration now if i take a look on the total in my console it's going to be a string this string here so this means that sometimes you really need to uh, call reduce with an initial value and this time I'm going to use zero as the initial value and then I'm going to assign this to a const called total now let's go and keep track again of the iteration and all the other variables now on the first iteration here and now because I used an initial value the accumulator will receive that initial value so accumulator will be equal to zero and then the item will be equal to the first element in my array then on the second is going to be the second uh, element in my array on the third uh, iteration is going to be the third element now accumulator plus item dot price is going to be zero plus the price which is 1000 then it's going to be 1000 
then the new accumulator value is going to be 1000 plus 500 is going to be 1500 and then the new value for the accumulator is going to be 1500 plus 800 so it's going to be 2300 so that's the same value we have got using a for loop so if i console log total it's going to be 2300 and that's the total price of all the items and now I think I covered everything about the reduce method. So that's all there is about the reduce method. So I think uh, maybe I didn't use some advanced examples here. So if you want me to talk about more advanced examples with the reduce method, just comment that down in the comments section. Well, I think that's it for the reduce method. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.